Welcome to Zion Evangelical Lutheran Church online worship on this ninth Sunday after Pentecost. We hope you'll be blessed in your time in worship this day as we are blessed by your presence with us. Let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship as the prelude is played. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, we confess our sin. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance, and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us, and in your spirit, lead us, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We pray. Glorious God, your generosity waters the world with goodness, and you cover creation with abundance. Awaken in us a hunger for the food that satisfies both body and spirit. And with this food, fill all the starving world 
Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from Isaiah, the 55th chapter. O oh, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And you that have no money, come, buy, and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which which does not satisfy. Listen carefully to me and eat what is good and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you, because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. The word of the Lord Thanks be to God. A reading from Romans, the ninth chapter. I am speaking the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience confirms it by the Holy Spirit. I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people, my kindred according to the flesh. They are Israelites, and to them belong the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. To them belong the patriarchs, and from them, according to the flesh, comes the Messiah, who is over all. God bless forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hear now the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now, when Jesus heard about the beheading of John the Baptist, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away, so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said to them, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the crowds. And all ate and were filled. And they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, twelve baskets full. And those who ate were about five thousand men besides women and children. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. 
we pray. Lord Jesus, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable to you, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. The kingdom of heaven is like... Did you notice that those words don't appear in today's gospel reading? But you can hear their echo, can't you? While what we hear from Matthew this morning could easily have become yet one more parable, it's not. Instead, it's a story. A story about God. A story about Jesus' ministry. It's a story about those places in time and space, those moments in our lives when the kingdom of heaven and this endlessly messy, imperfect, crazy world intersect. It's an important story for Christians. So important is it that it appears in all four Gospels. It's an incredible story, a miracle story. In it, we hear not only echoes of the many kingdom of heaven is like parables of recent weeks, but we also hear echoes of the Exodus story. There are people in the wilderness. There's no food. There's hunger. Ultimately, God provides food for all. Now, unlike Exodus, this food didn't perish. They collect 12 baskets of leftovers at the end of it. But like the Exodus story, though, we, we have people suggesting that the solution to hunger was elsewhere and that the crowd should go there. In the Exodus story, people are moaning about returning to the flesh pots of Egypt. In the Gospel, it's the disciples wanting to send the crowd off on its own. As we hear, when it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away, so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Send them away. Send them back to Egypt. We also, if we listen, might even hear echoes of the Last Supper. Words that call to mind Holy Communion. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. Lots of echoes resound in this scripture. But what is Jesus getting at? Truthfully, far more than one sermon or one reflection can reasonably cover. But two things do come to mind. The first is that when the kingdom of heaven and this earthly realm intersect, Jesus calls his disciples. That means he calls us and expects us to be involved in the work of the heavenly kingdom. Notice that Jesus doesn't ask the disciples to participate. He simply expects them to participate. Jesus said to them, they need not go away, you give them something to eat. They replied, we have nothing here but five loaves and two fish, and he said, bring them here to me. The divine and the human come together in Jesus, and his kingdom breaks into our world, and we baptized into him, continue to be bringers of that kingdom. Now know that there's no wiggle room here. There's no gray area here. Our work, the work of the baptized, in all that we do, is to point to the glory of God revealed by Christ. In all that we do, we point to the way all things will be after this world ends, and Jesus' kingdom is all that there is. Well, the second thing, I think, maybe even more importantly, is 
learning that what we see, what we perceive, what we know are vastly, vastly distorted compared to what God sees, what God knows. What did the disciples see? They saw five loaves, two fish, 5,000 men and countless women and children. They saw a problem bigger than they could solve. But Jesus? Jesus saw that there was more than enough to go around, regardless of how many people were there. See, I think you and I have been conditioned to think primarily in terms of scarcity. Not only isn't there enough to go around to satisfy everyone, there's probably not enough to satisfy you, to satisfy me. But Jesus thinks always in terms of abundance. Whether he's telling a parable about a sower casting seed willy-nilly on the ground of every type, or another story of turning hundreds of gallons of plain old water into the best wine imaginable, Jesus is all about abundance. While well, we're caught up in constant thoughts of scarcity. No wonder we have such challenges holding on to all that Jesus teaches us. It all goes against everything the prevailing culture and society around us has conditioned us to believe. In that profound tension, Jesus calls you and me to be part of the inbreaking of his kingdom of heaven. If we ever wonder why we're on this earth, there's part of our purpose. As kingdom inbreakers, we're charged to see the world around us differently. While we see all the ills around us, hunger, disease, violence, hatred, and all the rest, things Jesus saw too, he calls us to be go he calls us to go beyond what we see and to believe more in abundance to enact abundance, to share our abundance, joyfully distributing to others what we have and being amazed to discover that there is still more we can give away. It's a radically different way to live when so many around us are convinced that there isn't enough to go around, that you need to keep all that's yours to that way of thinking and living, we say no. We trust in God, who's shown us time and again there's always more than enough to go around. And yeah, I did say earlier that this was a miracle story. So here's something to ponder as you wrap your heart around sharing abundantly. What's the greater miracle here? That two fish and five loaves of bread fed well over 5,000 men, women, and children? Or that one man chose to feed all those people, provided them so much food that there were leftovers, and he never ever asked them for a single thing in return? God bless you this week and always.
we profess our faith, saying, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Confident of your care, we pray to God for the church, the world, and all who are in need. You take resources that appear to be meager, bless them, and there is enough. May your church trust that what you bless and ask us to share with the world is abundantly sufficient. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your bountiful creation offers sustenance and life for all creatures. Protect this abundance for the well-being of all. Reverse the damage we have caused your creation. Replenish groundwater supplies. Provide needed rains in places of drought. And protect forests from wildfires. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You offer yourself to all the nations and peoples of the earth, inviting everyone to abundant life. Bring the prophetic vision to fullness that all nations will run to you and that nations who do not know you will find their joy in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You opened your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. Hear the anguish of tender hearts who cry to you in suffering and satisfy their deepest needs. Bring wholeness and healing to those who suffer in body, heart, soul, and mind, especially those named on our prayer list and those we name before you now aloud on our lips or in the silence of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You offer freely the fullness of salvation. Give our congregation, Zion Evangelical Lutheran Church, such a welcoming heart that our words and actions may extend your free and abundant hospitality to all whom we encounter. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All creation is yours, and your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. Water and wine, word and bread, these are signs of your abundant grace. Nourish us through the gifts we bring, that we might proclaim your steadfast love in our communities and in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You gather your saints as one, united in the body of Jesus. Bring us with all your saints to the heavenly banquet. We remember with love and thanksgiving the saints we have known, especially 
Mary Cahill. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, we pray as Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive the blessing. Neither death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen.